Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Praise God. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. For the good things that he has done, the good things that he's doing right now yeah. and the good things that he shall do by faith. Amen. 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 I welcome all of you to our worship experience this morning. This will be the best 90 minutes of your week. Amen. Oh, somebody better give me an amen. The best 90 minutes of your week. And to all of you who are viewing, welcome, welcome, welcome. And don't you change that dial either. <laughs> the next 90 minutes. Amen. Amen. Let us stand to our feet. The call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 95, verses 1 and 2 from the NIV. Can we say it together? Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. Amen. Our morning hymn will be found in your bulletin. Love lifted me. You listen to that testimony. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Let's sing that with our youth choir. Amen. 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 Everybody love 
again. Love, love me, save me. Love me, save me. Father God, with your power, nothing is impossible. With our spirit raised and our hearts trusting, we are grateful for your promise that when two or more are gathered in your name, you are among them. We thank you for the opportunity to gather in your holy presence one more time. Oh Lord, we ask that you would bless our worship service today. We pray that you would help us to have a yearning heart and an open ear so that we may thirst for your word and manifest your glory. May you fill us with wisdom to understand your will for our lives. And after this worship, Father God, May you help us to be an instrument for you, Father God. Help us to be service workers, harvest workers, servant leaders. Oh God, help us to be what you would have us to be. To walk to walk and talk to talk. Oh God, we need you right now. Holy Spirit, come and dwell with us right now. Lord, we have no one else to call on but you right now. You are our God. You are our faith. You are our everything. It is in you that we live and have our purpose and meaning. Oh God, come on down today. We want to feel your presence. Father, we love you, we need you, we worship you. In Jesus' name, I make this request. Let those that love him, need him, and believe in him, say amen, amen, amen. 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 Maybe be seated in the presence of the Lord. Lord, I give you praise. Anybody give the Lord some praise this morning? Is there anybody like me that's just happy to be in the church house one more time? God is good. And all the time, God is good. Amen. Last Sunday, I received a text. And the text said, Pastor, 
you didn't recognize my birthday. <laughs> Pastor, I wasn't in church. I had to go to a track meet, but I listened to streaming and you recognize everybody else but me. Pastor and pastor, I just turned double digits and Dr. Poppy, you forgot all about me. Now, let me tell you something. You're talking about tears? And Lady B put her head down and said, oh, you in the doghouse now. My granddaughter, Madison, would you stand up, please? Oh, Mackenzie, Mackenzie, I'm sorry. Mackenzie, would you stand up? Brother Latson, Brother Latson, can we just do a short happy birthday to you? Stand up, Mackenzie. Real quick. Uh, real quick. Happy. Give me the smile. Give everybody the smile. Mackenzie. Happy birthday to you. Is Poppy out of the doghouse now? Thank you. But in all seriousness, birthdays are important. Seriously. And that really touched me when she said, you forgot my birthday. And the thing about it, it was April 1st. Mmm. Mmm. Amen. 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 Uh, Sister Rosalind Brinson, where are you, my dear? Would you come forth at this time? There's a special presentation. Put your hands together for her, please. She is one of the leaders of our youth council ministry. Amen. 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 Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. and friends. Um, this morning, I have the pleasure of introducing you to the participants of the March 16, 2024 West Philadelphia Congress of Christian Education's annual speakers, poster, and poetry contest. This event took place at the Second Antioch Baptist Church and was also viewed on Zoom. Seven Penn Memorial youth participated in the contest. Our youth also sang in the Congress choir and usher. The theme of the contest for this year was How I Care for God's Gift to Me at Home, School, and Play. This theme was based from the scripture 1 Peter 4, 10 to 11. I first want to start off with our youngest participants. If you are here, please come up with your trophies and other materials that you use for the contest. Shiloh McGill Bundy. She was our fourth place winner for the poster contest. I see her grandmother here, but uh, Shiloh's not here right now. Zyarela Dangerfield. She was third place for poster contest. Please come up with your trophy. Okay, our next uh, winner was Evan Barber. I'm going to be here, second place for the poster for his division. Avery Trump, first place. Aiden Win uh, Whit Wilson, he's in high school in the fourth division. He was fourth place. Come on up, please. Andrea Coleman, he was second place for poetry in the third high school division, and Randall uh, Campbell, he was first place from high school in our speech division. So everyone's not here yet, but please give them a hand. Now this is a photo op. Would you hold your posters up, please? And your trophies. 
Come on, be proud. We're proud of you. Hold them up. Amen. Amen. Hold your heads high. Amen. Amen. Here's another poster coming. Your shallow's grandmother, that's all right. All right, everybody, hold your posters up so we can take some photos. Smile, smile. You're winners. Yeah, you're winners. Amen, amen. We should be very proud of these young people. They spend time to work on their projects for, for weeks at a time, and we love you, and we're glad that you're part of our, our fellowship. Before we end, I would like to introduce you to Andre Coleman. He was second place in the high school division for poetry, and he would like to share this with you. My poem is called Rejoice. Say it again with my poem. My poem is called Rejoice. Remember what the Lord has done for you, and praise Him in the songs of worship. Embrace the knowledge and talents that He has gifted you with, and use them to encourage and bless others. Joy, love, and laughter comes from within your heart. Open your mind and explore the world around you. Important is the information you receive from older peers, and reflect on that information in the world of education. Care for those you love and trust, for the Lord has blessed you with them. Enjoy all the time God has given to you, for at the end of this life, he waits for you in his humble and everlasting home. Let's put our hands together for all of our young people. Come on. Every one of them. Every one of them. We're proud. They're winners. They're winners. Amen. 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 Now, let's receive our young people. The young fellowship, the youth fellowship choir. Amen. Thank you.
All participants are muted. Trying to pick his voices. <laughs> so we want to once again honor and recognize and present the newest members. And we have a number of people who just joined in the last few weeks who are going to come forward for the right hand of fellowship. But first, I want to bring first, forward the uh, family, family that joined uh, just uh, about a month ago. Uh, they got the right hand of fellowship but didn't receive their church certificate. So I'm going to ask members of the Alston family to come forward. Andre, Danielle, Madison, Mackenzie, and Milan, come forward. These are our new, let's give them a hand, the newest uh, members of our church. They received the right hand of fellowship, and now we're just going to present them. Uh, Deacon Foster will present them with their certificates. So, amen. Amen. Some of y'all might know this is a family of Pastor Dawson. Some of y'all might know that. Hey Amen. Let's give them a hand. You take your seat. And then we're going to uh, bring forward the newest uh, members or candidates who've come forward to join. So I'm going to ask uh, each of them as you hear your name called to come forward and uh, stand right here in front of the pulpit. And you will also get your church certificate. So let's start with the uh, most recent person who joined just last week, Mr. James Arnold Spell. Amen. Mr. Spell, are you here? Come on forward. Right. We didn't get to formally present it, but he's coming to us on restoration. Welcome back to Penn Memorial. Amen. And the next person is uh, Brother Malcolm Cook, who came to us on his Christian experience. With Malcolm, who he is. And this next young lady is coming to us as a candidate for holy baptism. We're going to put together a children's pre-baptism class, but nonetheless, she's come forward and she's been active. We have Sydney Elise Burroughs. I don't think she was expecting to hear her name. Amen. And again, when we put together the children's Pre-baptism class will be put together very shortly, and so we're going to baptize Sydney when she completes that class. And then the next person we have uh, joined remotely. I don't think we've ever had this before, but she lives in Las Vegas. She wants to be a member of Penn Memorial Baptist Church, and she is here today. This is Andrea Evans. Andrea Evans. Andrea Evans. And then finally, someone who's very familiar to us, who's been uh, here at Penn Memorial really since birth, was baptized a couple weeks ago on Easter Sunday. Uh, never really got his church certificate or the right hand of fellowship. So, Christopher Alexander, where are you? Come on. Yeah. Christopher, here he These are our newest members, and so let me just say on behalf of Pastor Dawkins and all of us, so the deacons and all the officers of Pim Memorial, we welcome you. We are your church family. You are now our family, and now Pastor Dawkins will formally welcome you, followed by the right hand of fellowship from our officers. Uh, 
welcome, welcome, welcome. You are part of the family now. Amen, amen, amen. Look at them smiling faces. Look at them. Amen. When people join the church, you must be doing something right. Hello, somebody. When people join the church, you must be doing something right. Hello, somebody. Praise the Lord, somebody. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Let's put our hands together and just thank God. Amen, amen, amen. 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 When you pray with confidence, God answers prayers. When you pray with the right motives, God will open doors. When you pray without ceasing, God will heal your body. Paul said, pray at all times. Pray in all situations. Just pray. Any praying folk in the house? Any praying folk in the house? Any witnesses in the house? Any witnesses in the house? Has God answered your prayers in the midnight hour? Amen, amen, amen. It's prayer time. It's prayer time. It's prayer time. Amen. We pray for the ill, hospitalized, shut-ins. We pray for those who just don't get around like they used to. Amen. We pray for those who have the desire to be in the worship experience but there's something that just keeps them from coming. But we pray anyhow. 
we pray for Sister Cora Marsenberg, Maddie Gully, and Thelma Smith, Phyllis and Bart Bundy. We pray for our own Reverend Dr. James L. Mitchell and his family. I have a report. His son is doing much better. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Reverend Peck, I want you to pray for Deacon Peck. Not feeling well today. Pray. We pray for Deaconess Judy Royal. Amen. 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 We just pray. We just pray. Knowing that God will open doors. God will make a way. God will hear our prayers. And God will answer in his own time. Is there a witness in the house? Is there a witness in the house? Look back over your life. Is there a witness in the house? Is there anybody like me who can testify? Only you, God. Only you, God. Nobody else. Only you, God. It's prayer time. Won't you stand and touch and agree with someone? It's prayer time. It's prayer time. Hallelujah. It's prayer time. Amen. A lady gave me a testimony this morning. She says, Pastor, I was in the hospital. And the doctors worked on me not one time, not two times, not three times. And the head doctor came in and said, I'm going to get it right. And he did. And she said, I'm in church right now to thank God for getting it right. God answers prayers. Our photographer, Howard Smith, had to go back in the hospital. And he's home now. Pray, church. Pray. Our own Reverend Gray will lead us in prayer. God bless. Pray, my brother. Sir. As we stand before the Lord right now. There was an old person that used to get up and say, must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? For there's a cross for everyone, and surely there's a cross for me. So now we look to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who bared that cross for all of us that's standing here in need of prayer right now. And those that are out on the media circuit, we must pray. And we must pray with confidence. And so, Father God, we come right now asking you to look down upon your servants, but also look down upon your people. And so, Father God, we know that we're sinners, but we're shaped in the iniquity of it. And so we don't move away from that. So we ask for forgiveness right now. And so, Father God, as we continue to pray, we ask that you look at the people in the hospitals. Those are suffering with pain. Those that may not even know you, but they call it on your name. And so, Father God, we ask that you touch them right now. And then, Father God, just a special prayer for the royal family, his wife, of course. We ask right now, wherever she's at, at home, whatever room she's in, just breathe on her right now. And then Dr. Mitchell's son, with the good report, as I spoke to him this week, we just say, thank you, Lord. And then, Father God, for us, that stand in need of prayer of every day. We ask that right now that they can lift up their hands to you and just say, thank you, Father God, for what you've done for us this day. Thank you for the laying down and the waking up. Thank you for giving us 
our right minds. Thank you for giving us a good heart. Thank you for giving us the love that you have shown us hanging on that cross. And so, Father God, as we look to you right now, Father God, we ask that you take our holy hand, that we trust only in you. Let us pray also for Israel with everything that's going on. You may not understand it right now, but Father God has been going on for years and years. And so, Father God, we pray for them right now that there's no war that's going to break out that can spread here to the United States. So, Father God, we stand in need of prayer on this Sunday morning. And we ask that you just come in right now, Father God. And then, Father God, as we come down to the end of Presidine, we ask that you touch this preacher of the hour, oh, yeah. Minister Tasha Davis. Give her the strength, Father God, to bring this word so we can take it out into the world and hand it to somebody else. So, Father God, as we look to you in this closing prayer, Father God, we just thank you right now. Let us all lift up our heads and just say, thank you, Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Let the church say amen, amen, and amen. First, give an honor to God, to our pastor, our guest minister, other pulpit associates. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's time for the service of giving. Amen. I ask those of you who can, please stand. Let us pray. Thank you for all of the gifts and blessings you have bestowed upon us. We ask that you give from our hearts, for God wants us to be obedient to his will and his way. Pastor has reminded us that we must step out on faith and watch God work in our lives and pouring out a blessing that we will not have room enough to store. We give to support God's house. Yes, yes. We bless those who can give and those who cannot at this time. But we thank you for this day yes. of life, but most importantly, for you, our Father. Yes. I want to just say one other thing. When you get a moment, look at a piece of money that you have. If you look at that money, it says, in God we trust. Come on, Come on. And so we want to trust in God, Amen. for he will make a way out of nowhere. Right. And the pastor said, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And the people said, praise the Lord. And the pastor asked, step out on faith, tied we must. And the people said, praise the Lord. And the pastor said, Abraham gave a tenth of all he had back to the Lord. And the pastor said, and the preacher said, people said, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Turn, turn to the outside aisles and please follow the direction of the others. <laughs> No matter 
things, all things. On the back of your bulletin, you will see the profile of our guest minister this morning, Minister Tanisha Davis. As your pastor, it's important that at special times that I bring ministers of God to come and edify us. Amen. 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 This young lady is someone that I've known for years and I've admired her. I've seen her Christian walk, her Christian talk. Something I really admire about Minister Davis she leads her family to Christ. You didn't hear what I just said. She's a woman of faith, a woman of God. She doesn't mind exhibiting it in her walk, her talk, her demeanor. And she leads and directs her family to Christ. Somebody ought to say amen. 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 You can read about all of her academic accomplishments and her professional accomplishments, but I'm proud to say that she is just a woman of God. She loves Jesus and what he's done for her. Amen, somebody. Powerful preacher, too. I remember one of the sermons that she preached, and I said to her, now, uh, Tanisha, uh, and I call her, she calls me Rev. I said, now, I'm going to steal that sermon, and I'm not going to give you credit for it. <laughs> I'm going to abridge it and tweak it. She can preach. Amen, somebody. Amen. And it's good to see her family here. Amen. 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 Uh, and that this young man, I got to call out, I love her husband. I love James. Stand up, James. James is a dynamite brother. As a matter of fact, stand up, sons, both sons, Amir and Zaya. You know what's interesting? Y'all sit down. If you look at the four of them, they all look alike. They do. But it's good. And another person I want to introduce, someone that I admire. I helped lead him to Christ. Deacon James Page, would you stand up, brother? 
He's one of the deacons there at Canaan. Thank you, my brother. He swears he wears bow ties better than mine. Uh, I think I'll have to teach him, but, uh, but it's good to have friends and family here. And to all of you who are here, thank you for coming this morning. And as I look out in the audience, I see all these young people sitting back there and over there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's put our hands together for our Youth Fellowship Choir. And the next voice you will hear will be Minister Tanisha Davis. Amen.
the ministry of the young people and to hear our young people call out to God, mold me and make me God. Let me be your instrument, God. Mm. And we see so many images of our young people and they're imprinted in our brains of who they are, who they are. I want you to look at these young people. This is who our young people are. This is who they are. Don't let the media fool you and don't let the enemy fool you into thinking that our young people are lost or that our young people are gone or they don't, aren't standing here for Christ because they are. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Y'all bless my soul this morning. Oh, I thank God. Thank God. Thank God. I give honor to God this morning, grateful to be here and grateful um, to your pastor and my brother in the ministry and my dear friend, um, Reverend Dawkins. I thank you for the invitation um, and just grateful to be here this morning. I bring greetings from Canaan, Canaan Baptist Church, the gem of Germantown. Amen. <laughs> And I honor my pastor and father in ministry, Reverend Dr. Derek Brennan. I'll go straight to our word this morning. First Peter chapter two, verses four through 10. Mm. Hallelujah, God, mold me and make me. Amen. 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 Coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious." But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. And verse 9, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Let us pray. Oh, gracious and eternal Father, we love you, we honor you, we lift you up. God, we thank you, God. We thank you for this time of worship, God. We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for these young people that have gathered today, God. We just pray that you be in the midst, God. I am merely a vessel, God. I pray that you fill me, God. Hide me behind the cross, that your people may hear your voice, that they may see your face, that they may have an encounter with you, God, that something they hear, God, may help them today, God, that souls may be saved, God, that somebody may be healed, delivered, or set free, God. But most of all, we pray that you get all glory, all honor, and all praise in Jesus' name. You may be seated. Amen. 
So your pastor gave me permission to speak to the young people this morning. So y'all excuse us while we have a conversation and I pray that you get something out of it, but I, I need you to know that I have permission to, to address our young people this morning. Amen. Many of you are very familiar with a fairy tale of a young girl who lived with her evil stepmother and two wicked stepsisters. They treated her terribly. They required her to wait on them hand and foot. They denied her access to the finer things in life. She has a fairy godmother that comes along and converts her rags, rags to beautiful, a beautiful gown, converts a pumpkin into a carriage that whisks her off to the prince's ball. She and the prince fall in love and eventually they're married and she becomes the princess. The story of Cinderella is so familiar that we often use the term whenever we talk about someone overcoming a challenge. When the underdog wins a game, we refer to them as a Cinderella team. Anytime someone goes from rags to riches, their story is known as a Cinderella story. When someone unexpectedly overcomes the odds to obtain success, they are said to be emulating that of Cinderella from this fairy tale. While this is merely a fairy tale with no factual basis at all, our text speaks of a rejected royal savior who is rejected even though he is the king of kings and lord of lords, whose chosen people may be viewed as the underdogs even though they are actually royalty. I'd like to spend a few minutes before you this morning preaching from the topic from reject to royalty. From reject to royalty. Jesus' story is not at all a fairy tale, but like Cinderella, he was rejected, scorned, and mistreated. And in our text, 1 Peter is written by Jesus' disciple, Peter, and this is between 62 and 64 AD. Peter is the one, I'm sure we all remember, he's the one who denies Jesus before his death. And Peter is now talking to the newly formed church or the body of believers who are being persecuted by a pagan culture. He's urging Christians at, at this time to live holy and to walk according to God's righteousness, even in the face of evil. This means that Christians were surrounded by people who are smoking, drinking, gambling, fornicating, and worshiping any and everything except God. They didn't just live in their neighborhood or next door to them. This was the culture that they found themselves deeply seeped in. Imagine being asked to live a holy life during a time like this. Wait a minute. When we think about it, it might sound very familiar. Our current society resembles this state of sinfulness. We are up against ungodliness daily. It's as if people have completely abandoned their morals and values and have blatantly rejected God and the church. It's like sin is trendy. Though it seems as if Christians, we may feel rejected, there's a clear path from rejection to our true identity, which God says is royalty. I'd like to draw your attention to three points this morning that help us go from rejection to royalty. First, we'll start with rejection, but there's a reality check that we have to understand in order to walk into our royalty. So first, let's look at rejection. We're living in a day and age when there's so much pressure to be who the world says we should be. What do I mean? Every day we're spending hours scrolling through Instagram stories and TikTok videos that tell us what we should aspire to, how we should look, what clothes are hot or not, what songs are hit or miss. We even see people getting rich, making millions of dollars off of OnlyFans pages, flaunting their perfect figures or transforming their bodies into what we've been led to believe as the perfect physique. We see teenagers 
giving lip injections and BBLs to fit society's standard of beauty. People are posting pictures with money and cars that aren't theirs just so they can look the part. We see young people committing suicide at alarming rates because they don't subscribe to certain gender norms or they're being bullied by their peers or even adults for being different or being unable to walk in their own truth. And young people, it might not be your peers. Sometimes it's your parents, your grandparents, your guardians. They've decided your whole life's plan. They know what school you're going to, what career you're choosing, but they forgot to include you. Forgot to ask you what you wanted and what you needed. Either way, the issue becomes that our innate desire to be accepted by our peers and our adults sometimes makes us feel like if we're not in, then we're out. We all want to belong. It's in our nature to want community and connection. And some of us feel like we need to fall in line or we'll be rejected if we don't fit in. Some of us are dealing with rejection of some kind or another for one reason or another. But verse 7 in our text says, the stone with the, which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Jesus was rejected. So we're in good company. Sometimes we have a fear of rejection that will stop us from even trying to do something different or courageous. Guess what? If Jesus was rejected, who are we to avoid rejection? Do not fear rejection. Don't let it get in the way of your destiny. I'm not sure what type of rejection we're experiencing, but remember that rejection breeds fear. I don't know what that fear is. Maybe it's making friends. Maybe it's pursuing a romantic relationship or trying out for a team or applying for a job or an internship or taking that honors course or AP class, applying to that college that nobody thinks you can get into, starting a business or joining a group or solving a problem with a new innovation. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Don't let fear hold you back. Don't let fear keep you from trying. Don't let rejection stop you. An answer delayed is not a denial. Maybe God's saying not yet, not today, but keep going because God has something in store for you. What would have happened if Michael Jordan had quit after being rejected? Or Oprah or Steve Jobs? What if Jesus quit after being rejected? Because the builders rejected Jesus, it didn't make him any less of a cornerstone. See, the builders missed the value in him, but it didn't make him any less valuable. So maybe the teacher didn't see how you could contribute to the AP course. It didn't mean that you weren't intelligent. The coach didn't see a spot for you on the team, but that doesn't diminish your God-given talents. The director might not have cast you for that role, but it doesn't undermine your acting abilities. The school didn't accept you into a program, but that doesn't make you any less of an asset to any academic environment. Maybe they didn't select you as the captain of the team or the student body president, but that doesn't disqualify you as a leader among your peers. Your leadership skills do not disappear because somebody failed to recognize them. And for some of you, maybe a parent walked out on you, but that didn't make you any less worthy of love. See, your value stays the same regardless of the judgment that somebody else makes. Your value doesn't change. You are who God says you are. And there's nothing anybody can do about that. No level of rejection could ever change that. So it's time for a reality check. 
My second point, reality check. Rejection is a fallacy. It is a state of mind that we do not have to own. Note that rejection becomes the burden of the rejecter to carry, not the rejected. You might have missed it. Rejection becomes the burden of the rejecter to carry, not the rejected. Our rejection does not have to be our reality. Do not get comfortable there. Don't wallow in it because Jesus is the cornerstone. The reality is that God has made you in his image and his likeness. Psalm 139.14 says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Romans 8.1 tells you that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Psalms 8, 4 through 6 says, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? Know that the word says that you are a little higher than the heavenly beings. He has crowned you with glory and honor. He has put all things, I said all things, under your feet. See, God says in Ephesians 4, 24, that you can put on a new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Gal Galatians 2.20 reminds us that we have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in, this, in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Remember Romans 8.31. If God be for us, who can be against us? Like Romans 8.37 says, know that all things, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. And in our text, verse 9 reminds us, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. Which brings me to my third point our royalty. Through him, we can go from rejection to royalty. Who cares what the world says? We're not living according to the world, but according to God's standard. And that is what matters. We are to live up to who God has called us to be. We don't serve, it doesn't serve anyone if we go about life dimming our lights or playing small to avoid intimidating others or pretending to be what we're not to avoid rejection. The sooner we walk into our God-given royalty, the better we're able to complete the assignment that God has for us in building his kingdom. Be who God has called you to be. The lyricist Laura Hill says it well when she says, don't be a hard rock when you really are a gem. See, we serve a perfect God even though we are imperfect people. We are perfectly imperfect. In our flesh, we're imperfect, but God's grace is perfect and covers our imperfections to make us uniquely who God intends for us to be. As followers of Christ, I believe somebody needs to be set free from the bondage of rejection so we can walk into our destinies as God's royal priests. 1 Peter 29, I'm sorry, 1 Peter 2, 9 reminds us that you are a chosen generation, you are a royal priesthood, you are a peculiar people. And see, peculiar today is referring to someone or something that is strange, odd, or uncommon. Yet, alternative meanings in the dictionary still tell us that the word can be used to describe something or someone that belongs exclusive, exclusively to a person, group, or thing. Know that you are not made to fit in a mold. God broke the mold when he made each and every one of us. We are a peculiar people. We are different. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All, all things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Let me borrow a line from Lotto. 
Rip me out the plastic. I've been acting brand new. Yup. You just ought to be different. You ought to walk different. You ought to talk different, dress different. You are different. It's all right if they think you're different. After God has gotten a hold of you, people should know that there's something different about you. You should stand out in the crowd and not fall in line because his light is all over you because you are royalty. Before I take my seat, let me speak life to my young royals. I'm not talking about Prince Harry and William and Kate, the Duchess of Cambridge. I'm talking about the royal priests and priestesses right here in front of me. My son Amir made an observation one day about how it bothered him that one of his coaches doesn't coach confidence. And that's a little nugget for the adults here today. I know what God says about our young people. But ask yourself, are you part of the problem or or you the solution? Are you coaching confidence? Are you rejecting our babies? Or are you placing the crowns on their heads that God says they deserve? Are you reminding them to hold their heads high and balance those crowns with dignity? We, the people of God, yes, you sis, yes, every deacon, yes, church mothers, we must be on assignment to build the kingdom of God, starting with pouring into the Joshua generation, that you are a royal priesthood that you, baby boy, are a young king destined for greatness. You, right there, baby girl, you are a child of the king. You are his daughter, that makes you a princess. You are royalty. I don't care what the world says. I don't care what the media says. I don't even care what the statistics say. You are somebody. You are who God says you are. You can be exactly who he's destined you to be. The word says, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for you to prosper, plans for you to have hope and a future. Not to harm. He has given you the authority to conquer anything the enemy throws in your way so that you can walk right into your destiny. His word said it, and I believe it. It doesn't matter how the teacher views you or the coach or even your parents sometimes. Yes, honor your mother and your father. However, see yourself the way God sees you. He says you are powerful. You are talented. You are intelligent. You are beautiful. You are wise. You are capable. You are worthy. You are blessed. You are strong. You are loved. You are royalty. God says you're royalty. You're special. You're different. You bring a uniqueness that some people might never understand. I want to leave you with these words from Marianne Williamson, our deepest fear. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, handsome, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God within us. And it's not just some of us, it's every one. And as we let our own light shine, we consciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Go forward, be great young people. Go forward, be royalty. Walk into your destiny because God says you're royalty. Be blessed.
young people, everybody. God has a plan for all of our lives. Yes. Don't accept rejection. Jesus was rejected. But Jesus overcame. And so shall we. What a word. 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 Amen. Amen. Woo, what a word. That spoke to me. Amen. Amen. We all have doubters. We all feel along this critical faith walk some rejection. But if God be for us, if God be for us, if God be for us, I don't care what man says or what the devil does. Amen. Direct me, Lord. Amen. Direct me, Lord. Is there one? Is there one? Young folk, I see you all around in the back. I see you in the middle. Is there one today that just wants to step out on faith? She said, you are royalty. In God's sight, you are royalty. In God's sight, you are royalty. She also said that God has a plan for your life. It doesn't matter what people say, and it doesn't matter if someone in your school, your teacher rejects you. Keep on going forward. God has a plan for your life. Is there one? Oh, young folk. Step out on faith. 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 Is there another? Step out on faith. Step out on faith. Jesus will make a difference in your life. Young folk, older folk, middle-aged folk, he'll make a difference in your life. Just tell the person, excuse me, excuse me. Just tell them, I'm coming up today, excuse me. Come on, my brother, I knew you were coming. I can see it on his face. Praise God. Praise God. He is God's child. Amen. The Lord spoke to him. Amen. Don't tell me what God can't do. The Lord is speaking to me. I said this last week, you've been coming, you've been worshiping, and I'm looking right at you. It's time for you to make that decision today. Amen, John Dawkins. What you waiting on? God loves you. God loves you. We love you. We love you. I'm going to keep calling you out. Amen, Pastor. It's not embarrassment. You need to be with God's people in God's house so God's people can teach you and love you.
My brothers and sisters, as your pastor, I'll never make an apology for what God does. There is no apology. God works in mysterious ways. His wonders to perform. Amen. Amen. If God can't do it, nobody can. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. I get happy when somebody joins the church. Hallelujah is right. Penn Memorial. Penn Memorial. You're a great church. And when God sends us somebody, we just got to love up on them. Help me somebody. Just love up on them. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Somebody can look at us from Las Vegas and wants to be a part. Tell me God ain't working. 3,000 miles away. And the Lord touched him. That's nobody but God. I understand when old saints used to say, I get happy when I think about Jesus and all he's done for my soul cries out. Thank God for. Let us bow our heads. Now unto him. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his throne with exceeding joy and glory to the only wise God, be majesty, domain, glory, and power now and forevermore. Let those that love him Need him. Believe in him. Say amen.